Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to All Beer Inside, back to the bubble editions of the episodes. I'm your not-so-humble host, Carp, and joining me today is Vanessa, also known as Beer Loving Lady on Instagram. Hi, thanks for uh, joining us today. Appreciate you taking your time to speak with us about your Instagram. Uh, but as we've been doing most shows, we're going to share a virtual beer. Uh, let my audience know what you're drinking. Um, I have just opened the Blacklist. It's a black German lager from the Napani Beer Company. I have never tried it before, um, which is why I grabbed it. So. Awesome what i got <laughs> cool i have uh from former interview uh third moon brewing i have the bone tree ipa uh nice. it's 6.5 percent alcohol okay. and uh let's do a virtual toast yeah so cheers a toast yeah i can't get the sound right with this <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. sorry drink before we cheers that was so rude of me i right, don't worry about it I'm not, uh, I'm not fancy like that. I, I don't adhere to those rules. Yeah. So, I live uh, by myself, so I'm not <laughs> used to like social interaction anymore, you know, like, wait, what? <laughs> well, I think all of our, most of our social interactions have all been via Zoom and stuff like that since uh, it appears we're mostly mature adults who yeah. are being respectful and, you know, socially distancing and, and all that stuff uh, until we can get our vaccines. So um, until we're all vaccinated and getting together again, uh, what's your Instagram story? What, what brought you to beer Instagramming? Yeah, um, basically, I originally, I like I have my own personal Instagram and um, would every now and then kind of post a beer that I was drinking um, that I thought was really good. And uh, no one seemed to care about <laughs> the beer pictures. And I just kind of like kept thinking to myself, there's got to be an audience out there for this. Um, I, you know, I'm, I was into craft beer at the time, but I hadn't really gotten into the community yet. Um, and then I just started talking to uh, somebody at a bar one time and, you know, like, oh, why don't you start a beer Instagram? So I did. <laughs> but it actually took me a really long time to like, get going with it. Like your Instagram, it does have stories. You do have like, here's the beer I'm drinking. Here's why. And here's a little story behind it, which I think is fantastic. Uh, yeah. where, did, where did that kind of come from that, that whole inspiration of like, I need to tell a story to why I'm having this beer or why I'm taking this picture. Yeah. I, um, I mean, for me, beer is like, I'm such a social person. Um, I'm shocked that I have survived this long through this pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> you're not the, the only lack one. <laughs> of interaction <laughs> but um I mean for me beer is like it's really you know drinking beer is such a social activity for me um so there's always stories happening around it and I kind of wanted to include that in my Instagram and kind of I felt at the time separate my brand and my posts a little bit from from other posts that I saw out there that were, um, you know, here's the beer, here's the percentage, here's what it tastes like, here's the brewery, bye. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and yeah, like, that's, that's, that's fine. That's, it's that's, like, <laughs> I love that too, because I often am like scrolling through and I'll find a new beer and I know who posts like that if I want to find something new and interesting. Um, but for me, I just like the story and like, I kind of, uh, I kind of wanted to make it a little bit personal as well with without you know getting too too personal um but yeah a little bit of a story like hey here's what i'm doing or here's what i did this weekend and i went here and i got this beer and here's what it tastes like i liked it i didn't like it sometimes i say i didn't like it um and hopefully have a pretty picture to go with it <laughs> well again honesty you know they say honesty is the best policy to me um and a lot of these guys will see like oh, maybe there's something wrong with our beer because 10, pe 10 faithful Instagram followers are like, mm -hmm. hey, this beer's bad. So Yeah, that actually happened to me once um, with uh, a brewery. Uh, I don't know if I should name names, but... <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> I opened a beer and I poured it and it was super flat and, and didn't really taste right. And so I posted about it and I was like, hey, like this is really weird but I had it and this is what it's like. And they wrote me back like within two minutes saying, 
oh my God, we found you. Um, we had like a case of this beer that we meant to be conditioning like for ourselves, but it actually got in the fridge. Like that's <laughs> what you got. We're so sorry. <laughs> so they sent me like um, replacement and a couple extra beers. But yeah, sometimes it's like, really, that's not what it's supposed to be like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, to me, it, it, you know, it helps us. It gives the way I see it is the people, people, people following you. It's like, oh, uh, let, I'm going to try this beer because I've never seen it before. I'm going to try that beer. So mm-hmm. it's uh, it goes by where it's it's the new kind of word of mouth where you don't have to go to the brewery itself and yeah. listen to the person behind the counter try and upsell you something where you're getting more honesty, mostly more honesty on Instagram. Yeah. And I think, you know, when you when you give a little personal spin to things, too, it it allows people to trust you more as well um, and and trust my opinion, hopefully, rather than just like, everything's great. Like, <laughs> all the beers are amazing. So why beer loving lady and not something like Vanessa drinks or Vanessa craft right. or, or anything like that? Why did what made you come up with beer loving underscore lady? Um, honestly, I was shocked that that name wasn't taken when I thought of it. Um, so that was part of why it took me so long actually to start my account was I wanted like the perfect name and I, I kept going back and back. Oh, it's taken. Oh, it's taken. And it, it just kind of was so obvious just one day, like, oh, I love beer. I'm a lady, beer loving lady. <laughs> and that's like as simple as it could be. And, uh, yeah, that's the story. <laughs> simple enough, straightforward. It's great that you got it too. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they have trouble finding their names. I know the, a lot of other shows I watch or listen to, these people try and get, you know, I am this instead of just their actual names. So mm-hmm. the fact that you got that, it seems pretty early on, at least, or or like you said, you're, you were kind of flabbergasted that, hey, this is available. Cool. Yeah, because everything else was taken. But I think I had to put in the underscore yeah. to to get it or something (laughs) and then uh untapped it looks like it's the same where you you stuck with the same handle yeah untapped um i don't use it anymore i can only handle one social media platform at a time i think and it just was getting a bit too much like to post one here and one there and you know like which one am i going to post on um and then rating it i found the rating to be really like arbitrary as well on untapped um you know, like, how are you going to rate a beer out of five? First of all, five is not enough numbers. <laughs> but, you know, for me, it might be a five. And for somebody mm-hmm. else, it might be a three. So yeah. I, I just didn't really, I don't know. I didn't get into it. No, well, one of the didn't more, enter- me in. yeah, one of the more entertaining untapped, uh, it's called untapped WTF. So we all know what WTF means. Uh, and they'll actually grab some people's bad reviews and post it. And so oh, okay. it's it's somebody like, oh man, this lactose beer is the worst, 0.25, because right. I hate lactose. So, yeah, P.S., I'm lactose intolerant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be farting all night because I had a lactose beer, and even though it said lactose, I, I didn't think there was actual lactose. So, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. okay. I'm, like, I'm, um, the, yeah, what's that Instagram account? Um, F. Jerry. Yeah. Okay. You know that one? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I want to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I swear. yeah. <laughs> um, but they take the posts from other people, right? And kind of make fun yeah. of it. Yeah. The creativity that this pandemic has created is actually pretty fantastic on some end. Uh, yeah. And it's actually known in human history whenever there is a pandemic, uh, the most art comes out after it because people are sitting down and being creative. Right. Most people are sitting down and being creative. Thankfully, we're at a time where I get to speak with somebody like yourself who's you know a six hour drive away from me so instead of a me driving to toronto and us grabbing a beer and talking about beer we get to do it here so yeah and then that's awesome yeah Yeah, i mean it makes sense i i do i just kind of want to do a little plug for the artisan community here Mm -hmm. now that you mentioned that and just like i think that people should really be reconsidering art as as an essential uh because it's the only thing that's getting all of us through this really so yeah, and then the artists, can... the artists are helping us too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, your local brewery could just hire an artist and create wonderful artwork like this. So yeah, or like film and mm-hmm. you know music and books and all that stuff. So yeah. 
Or you could be like Tom Cruise and yell at uh, people not wearing masks I on the movie set. <laughs> I heard that. I'm fine with it. I, I listen to it. I completely agree with Tom Cruise, and that's you're not yeah. going to hear that very often. But I mean, yeah, another uh, Tom Cruise blow up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's great. Uh, I see Prudhomme level two. What yeah. made you decide to do your Prudhomme? Um, just I wanted to learn more about beer really um you know once I kind of got into into it drinking it um I actually I, I used to waitress and uh that's kind of how I'm gonna answer maybe two questions in one here but that's kind of how I got into craft beer um was waitressing and uh being around the beer and um you know it is it, definitely like bar culture to after a shift sit down have a beer with your friends and chit chat kind of so actually i i went to a bar that you had to get your mandatory level one prudhomme to work there actually um so that was awesome um so i did that and then i I think my level two, I just uh, finished last year. Um, and I think it was five, maybe at least six years later that okay. I did the level two. Um, yeah, because I realized I don't really know what I'm talking about half the time. <laughs> so I wanted to uh, not only sound educated, but actually be educated uh, about the beer. And um, I definitely have a goal to do my level three um, at some point. It just uh, timing hasn't been great recently, um, obviously with the pandemic um, and some personal stuff. But yeah, I definitely uh, would love to get my level three and be a, a certified beer sommelier. So. Very cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I'm tempted. It's, um, you know, I've got the time. Uh, I just don't know if I have the concentration. I can be a little ADHD at sometimes, so it's, right. uh, it's not, yeah, it's not helpful. I mean, you can do level one and two online, um, which makes it really flexible. I mean, I did my level one online, but then went back and did it in person a couple of years ago. Um, and then did my level two as well in person uh, right after that. And for me, I mean, being in person, you can't beat it, right? Yeah. But but <laughs> I mean, they are they do offer it virtually. So, do you find with the Prudhomme, you'll uh, go to a let's say a, a brew pub or, or a beer bar, and you'll have you know your your beer bros, the guys who look like me who think that the IPA, the hazy IPA is the only way to go. And that's the only beer there is out there. Do you ever kind of like maybe not forcefully, but kind of give them a little bit of education of like, here's how you should actually be thinking about beer. Cause the fact that I'm finding a lot more women are doing this than men. I'm, I think it's awesome. I believe that the beer industry deserves a lot, my a lot more diversity from, you know, people of color to women yeah. to whatever you identify as the beer community needs this um, yeah it's craft beer we're trying to include all these flavors let's include the flavor of humanity in craft beer totally i totally agree with that there definitely needs to be yeah a change within within the, the brewing industry uh to be more inclusive but beer bros <laughs> i don't know i find um it's more like old men <laughs> i think <laughs> So like maybe I'm going to the wrong bars, but <laughs> it's usually like some old dude who's like sitting over and, you know, they're, they're like, oh, what are you drinking? And, you know, like, um, you know, very innocently, I, I hope. Um, and then kind of like I have a conversation with them and even my uncles and um, my stepdad, I kind of they're more the people that I kind of like to introduce the new things to. And, and I find the best way to do it is to see what their favorite beer is that they normally drink and then think of one that's similar and then introduce it that way. Um, yeah. I've uh, my sister has directly threatened me because I got my brother-in-law into good craft, expensive beer, as she says. 
uh, he had said, if he can't go back to drinking Coors Light, he's going to beat me up. Yeah. Uh, because he likes to just sit down and pound down a Coors. And I'm like, but here, try this beer here. Yeah. Like, oh, but I I only... did, I've done that to a few friends. Yeah. And, you know, um, one friend I, I met a few years ago and, and all they drank was Blue Moon. And I, this is not going to work, my friend. Like, <laughs> let me introduce you. Oh, I don't like hops. I don't like IPAs. Well, you haven't had the right ones then. Yes. And now, you know, they're like, oh, wow, this beer, it's only three fifty, or it's only $5. It's so cheap. And I'm, <laughs> what beers are you buying? A $5 beer is cheap. Yeah. I totally ruined them for life, <laughs> you know? Like... <laughs> Yeah, no, it's the same thing. My 70, well, 77 now, but when he, two years ago, oh, I want to start trying the beer you're drinking. Okay, here. Oh, and now he's like, oh, go go buy me these like IPAs that you've been hearing about. I'm like, okay, well, first of all, this is getting expensive on me because I'm undercharging you. I'm only yeah. charging you 20, 20 bucks for five beers or I shouldn't yeah. be charging you like 30. But yeah, it's uh, it's great to get people and, you know, reaching out to everybody to like come to craft. It's, we're still... Mm -hmm. You know, we're still the uh, the little neat. We're still a little niche in the end when you think about it. But more and more people want flavor. More and more people want diversity in their beer and what they're seeing. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, this is where it comes from. For sure. Awesome. Uh, have you collabed with any breweries? Have you uh, worked with any breweries for, for your Instagram or or your Prudhomme or anything like that? So, like way back when, um, a few years ago. Uh, it wasn't a personal collaboration, but uh, I was part of this group um, that we did a we did a collaboration with Shackland. There were like 25 of us. Um, and that was actually the first time that I had met other beer Instagrammers. Um, so that was awesome. Uh, we did a, a mango saison uh, with Shacklands uh, a couple years ago, which was really good. And uh, yeah, that was just so great to meet a bunch of other people and have people that I could like go to breweries with now and after that I really really kind of started getting way more into like traveling around the city and outside of the city visiting different breweries uh having people to go with really <laughs> helps that yeah yeah um, yeah and then um I I also did a collaboration with Black Lab um with um you were speaking earlier about ed uh tea dot drinks mm -hmm. and miyoshi his partner his wife um craft beer phoenix the three of us uh we worked with <clears throat> black lab to do a jelly bean sour uh it was called bean there dog that <laughs> Um, so yeah, we came up with the flavor and we actually put real jelly beans in the beer, um, which is pretty awesome. And $1 from every beer sold went to Hank's Haven, uh, which is a dog sanctuary. So that's pretty cool that we were able to give back at the same time. So yeah, that's, it was fun. That's all sorts of awesome. Uh, yeah, I actually got a message from Black Lab. I had taken a picture on untapped surprisingly uh where i had a bandit brewery glass with a black lab beer and don't black be lab, mixing the you know, brewery well, glassware well, so, with the beer so i wrote that uh dogs and uh, dogs and trash pandas can get along uh finally oh uh, that's cute yeah and then uh, black lab wrote me and they're like hey dude uh where's your address we'll send you glassware i'm like well i'm in montreal he's like yeah just give me your address so uh shout out to billy uh -huh. at black lab Thank you very much for the for the glassware and the beer you sent me. Uh, truly appreciate it. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, they're like you. Uh, you need some new glassware. Yeah. I uh, I absolutely love uh, Black Lab Brewing. The couple of times I've had a chance to go, you're surrounded by good beer and dogs. What can go wrong, in my opinion? Um, I'm I'm drinking so a beer and I'm petting some stranger's dog who's like giving me kisses. I'm like, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> so. Yeah, if you're definitely in need of some um, some dog love, I would. Yeah, that's the place to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it settles all the dopamine in the brain that you need to to have all all yeah, the happiness created. Zen. Yeah. It gets a little loud there sometimes with all the barking, <laughs> um, but yeah, I take back the Zen comment. Yeah. With it, but um, <laughs> yeah, no. your heart will your heart will feel better from the petting There's, the dogs. 
there's something about brewery dogs too. I was actually at St. Jay's in Vermont two years ago because we can still travel to America then. Uh, and uh, they had a brewery, big brewery German shepherd and named Barley and dog comes up and he's like, pet me. And then the dog like goes bugs people for food and they like, the owner's like, get away from them, Barley. Just oh, he's probably so, <laughs> so spoiled. Yeah. It's great. And then I look over in the, into the brew house and the dog just pops his head open. So Oh, that's uh, cute. It's fantastic. And I've always said, if I ever have a brewery, I'm, I'm bringing up a brewery dog along with that. So. Oh, 1 million percent. Yeah. I agree. Me too. So you collabed and brewed with Black Lab. Do you brew on your own at all? No, I don't. Um, a lot of people have suggested that I take it up over the pandemic as a hobby, something to do, but uh, I don't think I would do well with all the cleaning afterwards I I I don't have a dishwasher and I hate just doing my own dishes and I don't know how it has happened during this pandemic it's like there's 10 people living here but it's only me yep. you know like all the cutlery is used in a day and there's like five glasses on the couch what am I doing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Are people coming into my house when I'm Yeah, just it's like the little cutlery out. elves. <laughs> exactly. No, it's, yeah. Yeah, um, the cleaning would be too much, I think. Um, if I didn't have to, if, like, I could just brew, just only do the fun stuff, I would totally do it. But I don't, yeah, the cleaning. Yeah, you need an intern to do all the cleaning parts. That's, that would be mine. Yeah. I, I need a cleaning intern mm -hmm. going out hunting, idea. you know, going out drinking all the bottled Grolsches. So I have the nice flip top bottles, but they also have to drink all the Grolsch because Grolsch is okay at best. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, yeah. And somebody, you just offer them all the free beer. Exactly. So and it'd they be just perfect. have to clean all your stuff for you. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you're in Toronto. You got a lot of great breweries in Toronto. I feel like they're popping. One's popping up every other weekend. Uh, what are some of your, somebody's coming in from out of town, let's say myself, I have no, brew, no knowledge of Toronto, mm -hmm. uh, for example, what would you suggest a few places to try in the area that are hands down, you have to go there? Yeah, um, for one, I think the main question that I ask people when they ask me this is where, where in Toronto are you going to be? Because it's a big city. And, you know, I don't want to say go to this place here on the east and that place there on the west. So, like, if it was real life, I would say, where are you going? And, you know, I kind of have, like, a little bit of, like, a beer crawl route in different parts of the city that mm -hmm. I've done. But if you could go anywhere, um, definitely I would say Rorschach. You have to go to Rorschach out in the east end just for their um experimental beers every yeah. every time i go there there's something different something new something fun you have to get a flight you can get you know they have those cute little glasses mm -hmm. and you get a flight and five of them are amazing and one's not so great and three are like okay but yeah. it's just worth it for the experience to have all these crazy different beers like a dessert lager yeah has, I what what is that? And they yeah. have like the, um, what were the ones I had this summer? Like the sorbet, the fruit juice beers that yeah. had to be refrigerated. Uh, I had one of those. It was so good. Um, just, yeah, stuff like that. It's definitely worth going to. And then I would say kind of like for atmosphere, I would definitely say go to Shacklands. It's such a quirky little space. Dave, the uh, owner, is just such a funny, interesting guy. He'll tell you stories about his whole life, uh, entertainment for the whole time you're there. Um, and they also specialize in Belgian beers. Um, so that is kind of one thing that, that stands out for them. And, and then I think my third one would probably be uh, Left Field. Just we're going... East, west, back east. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so left field, because, yeah, I mean, dependability, I guess, is like a weird word to describe it. Well, no, but they're, depends, they're, but they're like on point every time. Yeah, they're always good. They have a little bit of everything, and um, they also allow dogs there. Yeah. And it's family. It's like family oriented, you know? So, like, mm -hmm. if, you, if you have a little kid, it's like super friendly there, too. Yeah, what, what, 
what threw me off when I went to left field is, oh, I passed it. Oh, I passed it again. Oh, it's an oh, alleyway. Yes, it's down huh? the alleyway. So and then I go down the alleyway and I'm lucky enough that somebody was pulling out of a parking spot. So I'm like, yeah. And I get there and they're like, they have a baseball kind of scoreboard behind them. And then you're filling out like a lineup card for your, for yeah. your taster flight. So yeah, uh, I like that the yeah. theme as well. It's fun. Yeah. yeah but it is a little, it's hidden right, right down the yeah. alley. So yeah. if you're not from the city, don't, don't be afraid to go down the alley. It's safe. <laughs> We're Canada. We're fine most of the time. So <laughs> uh, now I kind of noticed you, you haven't been posting a lot. You've taken a kind of break. Is there a reason for that? If you want to speak about it, if you don't, that's totally up to you. My, my Instagram hiatus. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I mean, generally speaking, I'm not that Instagrammer who posts every day anyways um I try to post two or three times a week and that's it uh yeah. I I just kind of and because I I find that sometimes I get to the point where it's not fun anymore and I start to feel like oh I have to post this you know like uh can't I just drink my beer and enjoy it <laughs> without thinking about, oh, where am I going to take this picture? And, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, what if, you know, this is so great. What if I don't post it? I want people to know about it. Mm -hmm. So I kind of get in my head a little bit sometimes. It's happened a couple of times. So that was, that was kind of the main reason that I, that I stopped posting this summer. Just wasn't really fun anymore. I took a break from just social media in general, but um, yeah, I just also been dealing with like a lot of chronic back pain as well um so i just had to kind of focus on focus on myself um but i think i'm at the point where i'm definitely at the point where i'm considering coming back mm -hmm. so, oh, i yeah. mean it's 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 not fun if it's like an unpaid job right so it, well it is fun i mean it, it's supposed to be fun right so yeah. for me my my beer account it's all fun it should be fun i should be having fun taking the pictures i should be having fun thinking about what i'm going to write um how i'm going to associate it with my day or my week um and then also you know like doing my tasting notes and somehow incorporating that into my post as well which is why sometimes you know you see the words that are yep. this long and i don't know how many people actually read it or not <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's one thing. I, I'm doing the beer advent calendar right now. It'll be done by the time this episode is out. But yeah. uh, it's like, okay, day this of this. So here's where I'm drinking from. So like, you know, I give a shout out to the brewery and here's the beer and here's what I think about it. And then I'm like, should I even bother? And, you know, use the hashtags yeah. like hashtag Quebec craft, hashtag Ontario craft beer, hashtag support. Well, it's all right now. It's all hashtag support Canadian businesses, hashtag buy local hashtag, you know, because yeah. We need to support these guys. We want them around. Um, some guys like Third Moon opened during the pandemic and are extremely successful. So mm -hmm. it's yeah. uh, we need them all to stick around. So totally, totally. So yeah, I just I just think for anybody once it gets to the point where it's not fun, if you're getting anxiety from it, I think I think a lot of people forget about that with social media um that you know for some people it does like cause a lot of anxiety <laughs> so like if that's happening take a break yeah you know and you know don't apologize for not posting enough or as much as you think that you should be you know just just have fun with it <laughs> that's that's a perfectly reasonable response it's yeah. almost like taking a vacation so yeah uh, what i ask everybody when it's safe to travel again mm -hmm. uh, and and now i'm gonna I've, I've been adding this caveat caveat uh for one money is very much a necessary part of this vacation and the other yeah. part is if i can spend a ridiculous amount of money that i never have to worry about debt again in my life uh so hopping on right. a a steel tube with recycled air with hundreds of other people who you don't have to worry about catching a deadly virus from a couple of future beer cations money money's not an option yeah um definitely i would i want to do a europe beercation definitely 
Belgium, definitely on the top of, of that European uh, beer tour there. I just like, I just, the history there, I think would be like really cool um, to go visit some of the abbeys and see where, you know, styles that have been around for hundreds of years and recipes where, mm -hmm. where they're made. Um, and then I guess that would be like the money's not a factor one. Um, and more locally, I think I... I definitely want to get to um, like New England area of the state. So I guess Vermont, New Hampshire, mm -hmm. Massachusetts. Massachusetts, yeah. How do you say that? It's yeah, I, I I butchered it for years because my my parents, you know, when they're they teach you the wrong saying or wrong word, then you keep saying it until yeah, uh, your love. Well, since I'm a guy, I have uh, I have great guy friends, and we're all jerks to each other, and that's the way guys are supposed to be. Um, and they started ridiculing me, so I finally fixed it. So it's Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Massachusetts? Yes. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, that. Um, I'm assuming New Hampshire, Maine, all that area. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, maybe I am a beer dude myself because I do love a good hazy IPA, you know? <laughs> Um, so yeah, I would just kind of like love to do that circuit there and, and check, check that all out and have a different, a different NEPA at every stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Vermont's uh, pretty fantastic. I gotta say, thankfully Vermont's only two, well, Burlington, Vermont's only two hours from Montreal. It's closer uh, for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is great. I mean, you're, you have Michigan below you, so you could go to Grand Rapids. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know about Detroit, but, uh, like that that kind of michigan area where there's a lot of breweries right now when yeah. it's when it's kind of well when the borders open again yeah i went to um australia not this past march mm -hmm. obviously last <laughs> march yes <laughs> i guess almost two years ago now yeah. wow. and i actually went for my cousin's wedding and it wasn't purposefully going to be a beer occasion, but I definitely made it into one. Very and cool. everywhere I went, I was kind of researching what craft breweries are here because they definitely have a really big craft beer scene there as well. It's just so fun. It's like so different, though, because uh, they still have a lot of stigma over there about women drinking beer. So for me, as a, I was traveling alone, as a woman and sitting at the bar, the bartender would be like, okay, can I, what do you want? You know, <laughs> like, and, and all the other women. So all the breweries in Australia, they serve wine and spirits for the women that are coming uh, in because none of them will order beer. If you look around, it's like all their, all the guys that they're with have a beer and all the ladies have a glass of white wine. It was, it was just like, so crazy so and so their regular beer there's four and a half percent mm -hmm. so when i would order an ipa they'd be like it's six percent and <laughs> i was like yeah i know <laughs> we have 11 percent beers in canada <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. one of the breweries not far from me comes out with a whiskey barrel aged beer every year yeah <laughs> yeah it shocked them that i was ordering a six percent beer i was like uh, i guess please they're like so a half and i'm like no no a full <laughs> full pint please i'm surprised too because you probably hear i i know it's you know what what is um uh -huh, i'm not going to say the joke but what what's the commonality between american beer and sex in a canoe it's close to water there's uh, an extra word there i don't add uh because we're, we're that show but yep. it's um i'm <laughs> surprised that Aus it. australia is not like oh it's canadian so come and you know, hang out with the kangaroo and have some of our beer here. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, they're like four point five is their and their light beer is. I think it's like three and a half, basically club soda. <laughs> yeah, I don't get that. I, I'm surprised. Uh, I know I can't remember what uh, I listen to beer podcasts. I, I you know I work in front of a computer eight hours a day plus this, so I listen to other beer podcasts and they had mentioned it's kaiju beer. And I think they said Sydney. I didn't go to Sydney this okay. time. 
So that's one I want to check out because uh, uh, do you know what a kaiju is? No. Okay, so uh, Godzilla, that's a kaiju. Oh, yes. there's more than one? Yeah, Godzilla? like Godzilla, King Kong, things like that. You know, the super big giant monsters. Oh, okay, um, okay. And so all their labels are like super fun, cartoony, like right. a- Japanese anime, big monsters. Okay, um, okay. Just that concept cool. alone. And I'm very guilty of that where I'll buy beer based on art sometimes. Yeah. So it's... uh. That's exactly why I'm like, this looks fun, entertaining, uh, but I can't bring it back. Obviously, you don't want to put carbonated cans in a plane. So it means you got to spend some time in Australia, drink a lot of beer. So You can do it. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. So it's <laughs> uh, great. Uh, so you do plan on coming back to Instagram at, at some point, just even slow reposting. So that's Yeah, that's I think so. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I, I think the other really silly thing that that you kind of get wrapped up in when you do take a break is, ooh, what should my first post back be? <laughs> it's got to be a good one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, it's, you know, it's a little bit of pressure. But, um, yeah, I definitely, I'm coming back. I definitely am coming back. Um probably slowly, probably not posting as much as I used to, but, um, yeah, I'll be back for sure. No, that's, that's great to hear. And, uh, like I tell everybody, uh, when it's safe to all of us to gather again, uh, I'm, I want to make it out to Toronto and I'm going to have to message you at yeah. our T dot drinks. Uh, if Mary Bailey can come down from where she lives, yeah, I'm not going to sure. mention where she lives on the podcast. Cause that's up to her that's her decision you know and get us all together to grab beers somewhere together again i want to do it with everybody i've met in toronto's or via this in toronto same thing yeah. in montreal when we're all safe to get together again we all get to get a beer together so for sure and, i agree yeah. i think that would be awesome <laughs> yeah. and i'm going to bring the man behind the scenes uh phil he, he'll be joining so all of a sudden you'll see me with an asian fella and you'll be like huh and i'll be like oh that's that's phil he's my video guy so he's on the credits yeah yeah he's always there he's that guy on the credits uh, <laughs> for sure <laughs> awesome uh i have no other questions for you today uh once again thank you very much for for joining me today yeah uh, thank you for having me yeah uh it's truly appreciated and and you said this was your first interview so to get an idea how, how did you how did it feel uh, you made it really hard and uncomfortable. <laughs> I gotta say, it okay, was pretty so horrible. We'll just, we'll not even bother with it the episode. It was the worst. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah, it was actually really fun. I, I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it was great. I'm glad I made a couple notes beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, it was fun for sure. Thank you for asking me to do this. Uh, so for those who want to follow you on social media, let everybody know where they can find you. I am at beer loving underscore lady on Instagram. And that's about it. I do have untapped, but I don't keep it up to date. And I'm, uh, it's the same. It's the same name there. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so we're going to add all that in the show notes. So you can okay. just click on the links and, and join or follow her Instagram from there. Uh, as for us, we're at all beer inside on all social media. I'm at killer carpe diem on Instagram where I can be found for my personal account, which is pretty much the exact same thing as this show. Uh, merch will be available shortly. T-shirts, mugs when we can and things like that will be on the bottom of the YouTube sh- uh, notes where you could purchase the T-shirts. Glassware. Have, uh, working on glassware. Uh, fortunately, Unfortunately, it's not as easy as t-shirts are, <laughs> so, uh, uh, but yes, uh, we're trying. Um, when this pandemic stuff is all over, there will be another show coming out, but that's far for it's now, future. unfortunately. Uh, and uh, allbeerinside.com is the website where you can find everything else. As I say at the end of all episodes, drink craft, not crap. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you very, very Thank much. You. I really appreciate it.